Have you ever been frustrated trying to cut nice, neat, thin slices of canes to use in your polymer clay projects? I know I have, and I've wasted a lot of cane that I spent a lot of time building. And so a few months ago, I bought for myself a Lucy Clay mini slicer. And so today I'm going to show you ways I've figured out to use it to make my polymer clay cane slicing much neater and more accurate. So here's the mini slicer from Lucy Clay. Lucy is a gal over in, I believe, the Czech Republic who likes to play with polymer clay, and her father is an engineering sort, and he helped design some wonderful tools that she has put on the market. I also own her Czech Struder, which I owe you guys a video of because it's a fantastic tool as well. They're all well engineered, well designed, and I'm pretty happy with this small slicer. It was half the price of the big one. It was about $100, and the big one's around $200. So I'm going to show you how I figured out how to use it. Now if you got yours and are looking on in dismay at it all in pieces in the box, you can go to my video that shows you how to assemble it because there is some assembly. I know some of you don't like doing that sort of thing. I kind of enjoy it. So here's one very important thing that comes with your Lucy Clay slicer and it's just a big old magnet. And this is a safety device. It goes right here over the blade so that it will not lift up easily. There's even a little clue here show, showing you the hole, which corresponds to, it's actually not a hole, it's a magnet that your blade goes up on, which is another safety device. And so they, they kind of thought this through. So whenever I'm not using my slicer, this magnet is right on here. I don't have small children around, but anything could happen. So I'll just set this aside now once I'm ready to slice. The other thing unfortunately that I found was necessary is to remove this back support. It is just in the way. I'll show you what I mean. Here I have some cane. This is a piece of a butterfly cane. You can see it in use here on this business card holder that I made with all different slices of cane. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. And this cane is short enough that if I wanted to slice it, I would not need to pull this out. But if I get much longer than this, like if I want to slice this cane, it's just in the way. So I've found it kind of has just become my practice when I'm ready to start slicing, this comes off. These two brackets basically keep the whole thing square so as long as you don't try to rack it after you take this off, you'll be fine. And it just gives you a little bit more room in the back. Now it comes with this tray, and the sticker that's on it has inches and then also centimeters and millimeters. Even though I'm an American and I've been using the American or Imperial measurements all my life, since I got into jewelry making and polymer clay, I just think the metric system makes so much more sense when you're measuring little bitty things like beads and slices of clay. And so I like to use millimeter measurements. So I'm going to slide this in with the words mini slicer facing me rather than the code here so that I've got mi the millimeters right here. So that slides in there. And it's good to keep it for keeping it steady if you have it out beyond the front of the tray. And if you look carefully there, what I've done is I've lined up my blade so that it is right on one of those marks. Now watch here, you can see, can you see that move? There is a little bit of side to side slop in this in this tray. So I've kind of figured out a technique for getting beyond that. I think if I had it to do over again I might have gotten the bigger one which has a dial that you can dial in a very fine adjustment for your slices. But I don't do a lot of caning and my thought was that this is small and fits on my desk nicely and the big one takes up a fair amount of space. 
So I'll, I'll make do with this. So we've got that lined up right on the one for now. So that's lined up, so good. So I have that down. And now here's some cane I want to slice. This was sliced on the slicer, so I know this is a nice, neat cut edge. And I hate always wasting some at the beginning or the end, so this is kind of my workaround. I'm going to take my cane, I'm going to press it up against that blade. I'm also kind of lining it up with this line. It, that's not so crucial, but you, I mean, you don't want to go in this way, obviously. I want it pretty much perpendicular to the blade. A little bit of light pressure. I'm actually going to keep my fingers on there while I lift up the blade. That should be lined up exactly on the one. Now what I'm looking at over here are these lines and this edge and I can just scooch it. So here it was on this line, which lines up with the one. And I found that, and I'm just going to scooch it to the next one. And what I'm doing with my left hand is I'm pushing this, not so hard that I push the machine over, but just hard enough that this tray is firmly against this whole edge over here and then I can kind of push in opposition to my left hand, so my hands are pushing towards each other as I cut. And I'm double checking, see that just moved. So I'm double checking, and that is a paper thin slice. That wasn't really what I intended to do. Don't reach under the blade. There's a magnet there holding it up, and it's kind of stiff anyways, but I don't know how long that stiffness is going to remain. I think it'll probably loosen up the more I use it. So now let's advance that one whole mark right over here. Pushing the tray up against the right side with my left hand, pushing just slightly this way my right hand. Yeah. Left hand pushes towards the right, right hand pushes towards the left. Check that mark. You just kind of have to keep double checking. Make sure that mark is where you want it. And slice. Now that is a pretty thick slice. But what's nice is that you can get them very consistent. So let's try again. I think something moved because that's thicker than I was expecting it to be. Okay. There we go. That's a nice slice. About an eighth of an inch thick. But if, I, if you want them thinner, what I found to do, it's hard to line up with these lines over here but because you have no reference. So what I found to do is just go right in the middle of two lines over here. And the more you do, the more you'll be able to see and get that accurate and consistent. So about half of that thickness. That's really a thickness I'm looking for. And I forgot to bring a tool to pick that up with. That's, that's a nice thickness. One thing I found when making this, this was this size, and it, it spread a bit, not a ton, but it definitely spread a bit, like this, this one probably shows it most dramatically. Here's this little green piece, and you can see how much these spread. When I made them this thickness, but I'm certain if I made them half of that thickness, this thickness, they wouldn't have spread as much. So you get twice as much out of your cane, and you have a bit more accuracy in the finished size that you want your pieces to be. So that's how I figured out to use this tool to get nice thin slices. Consistency is really, really useful here. And notice I'm leaving the blade down so that if I accidentally like, were to reach under and brush up against it, I'm not going to because it's down out of the way, but you should never reach under there. 
just don't ever do it. Make it a habit, make it a practice that if you need to get something on here, back the tray out, take it off completely, put the blade down. And so I, I'm rather pleased with this. I, I do in some ways in the interest of accuracy and ease, I think the bigger one would probably be better, but I'm not someone who does a lot of caning. And if you do a lot of caning and you do a lot of slicing of canes, you may not even need a tool like this because really it is something you can do. You can get very good and consistent at this sort of thing just with your regular blade with a bit of practice. So if you do a lot of caning, then maybe you don't need this because you're getting in the practice. But if you're someone like me that kind of dabbles and only does it on occasion, then you might find a tool like this really handy. And just to get back to this, I had a lot of fun making this and I'm going to do another Friday Findings video sometime soon showing what I learned about making a veneer like this. This is a business card case that I bought on Amazon and then this is just a cover for it that I made. There's my business cards in there. I figured if I was going to be handing out business cards I had to have something on it that showed what I do. So in that video I will show you some tips and tricks that I figured out for taking a whole bunch of different canes and these were all canes that I already had made that I had made for whatever reason in the past. And so I had all of these, even the leaves and such. And so I hope you found that helpful. If you bought the Lucy Clay Mini Slicer and found it maybe a little bit frustrating to use, I hope that that might give you some help. If you're interested in the supplies I used, you can click on the little eye or the tag in the upper right of the video or the link in the description box below the video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and take a look at my Patreon page to see how you can get bonus tutorials every month. Happy creating. Bye-bye.